Hello, uh, welcome to this tutorial. It's about printing in Excel. Uh, I'm using Excel 2010, um, but quite a lot of what I'm going to say is uh, suitable for Excel 2007 as well, and I'll explain the differences as we go through. Uh, now, printing in Excel is really important uh, because unlike if you're using Word, where you can actually see on screen what the pages look like before you print. With Excel, you can't. If you imagine the Excel spreadsheets are like big, um, big, big grids, and if the grid is too big to fit onto a single page, you've got to make some choices about how the spreadsheet is going to fit and if it's going to be split up. So what I've got here is an example spreadsheet with three tabs, marked small, medium, and large, just to explain the... Uh, the difference in how you might treat a small, medium or large spreadsheet when you print it out. Um, so, to print out, uh, what I'm going to do uh, in Excel 2010 is go to this File tab. If you're in 2007, Excel 2007, you click on the Office button and then you choose Print Preview. I'm going to just click on uh, Print. Now in Excel 2010, uh, it looks like this. It always gives you a print preview uh, rather than having to choose it. Also in Excel 2007 uh, when you've got the print preview you've got a button to choose page setup. Now in 2010 you can choose page setup by clicking here um, and it brings up exactly the same dialog box that you get in Excel 2007. I'm just going to cancel that for a second and come back to it in a minute. Uh, just to talk briefly about Excel 2010 and how you can set it up for printing, you can see down here uh, that we've just got a single page. Uh, the things that you can do before you go to that page setup dialog box is you can choose to print the active sheet, which just means the sheet you're looking at. We've got three sheets, marked small, medium and large. This is just going to print out the active one, which is the small one. Here you can choose which pages uh, you want to print out. We've only got a single page. And you can choose to have, if it is a multiple page document, whether it's going to be collated or uncollated. You can change the page orientation. So here I could change it from landscape, sorry, from portrait to landscape. And again, the whole thing fits on a single page, so that's no problem. And then here uh, you can choose what uh, paper size you're going to use. Most of us are going to leave it just on A4. You can also choose uh, what sort of margins you're going to have, uh, normal, narrow, wide, like that, so it just makes the uh, size of the margins change. I'll take it back to normal. And at the moment there's no scaling. Uh, if I wanted to, if I go to scaling, I could um, shrink it down. If it, if it was only slightly too big for this single page, I could shrink it down. OK, um, I'm now going to go back to the Home tab and I'm going to go to the Medium sheet. Back to File, back to Print. So in this one you can see this sheet would actually print off on three pages. Uh, so the first thing we could probably do, because if we actually have a look at the other pages, the shape of this sheet is, is more horizontal than vertical. So what I'm going to do is change the page orientation to landscape. So now it goes to two pages, like that, one page, two page. And because it only goes just slightly onto the second page, what I'm going to do is go to uh, the scaling option and choose fit that sheet onto a single page. And that shrinks it down onto the single page. Um, what you might want to do with something like this, uh, because it might be difficult for the eye to uh, follow the, 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 the numbers as they go across, is put some sort of grid on the spreadsheet. Um, by default there are no grids, it's just black, it just puts the, uh, the contents of the sheet onto a blank background. But we can do this by going to the Page Setup option. So this is the first thing we're going to look at in Page Setup. And this dialog box here is the same as you get for Page Setup in Excel 2007. 
So to put a grid in, you go to the Sheet tab and you just choose Grid Lines and then you click on OK. And that puts a grid over the area that it's going to print out. The other thing that we could look at as well, if we go back to Page Setup, on that same tab, the Sheet tab, is Row and Column Headings. This can sometimes be quite useful to turn on. I'm going to put a tick on that because what that does it puts the A, B, C, D, E for the column headings and it puts the numbers down for the row headings. So if you're sending a, a spreadsheet to somebody else perhaps, uh, or if you're going to discuss it in a meeting, it's quite useful to have these options on because then you can tell people, well, the figure in cell D8, for example, and then everybody can see which particular cell it is that you're looking at. Right, I'm going to go to Home and I'm going to go to the third of the example spreadsheet. Now this is quite a big sheet and I'm going to go to file I'm going to go to print and I'm going to go straight to uh, page setup which brings this dialog box up and so the way I'm going to handle this is the way in which I would handle it using page setup in uh, Excel 2007. So the problem with this is it needs first to be changed to be landscape. Actually, I'll just cancel this. If I just go across, look, you can see it doesn't really fit on the on the various pages. But I think this is more of a, uh, there's more rows that need to be seen across here than just the four we can get in if the uh, paper is portrait. And so I'm going to go to page setup and I'm going to change it to landscape and then click on OK. So it's now changed it to landscape. I could have done it in Excel 2010 with this option as well. Um, let's have a look again. We'd still six pages. So it's more or less, but it still hasn't really got enough um, space across here. So what I'm going to get, do is go to Page Setup, and I'm going to change this to say fit to one page wide by, and then I don't know how many tall it is, but I'm going to guess, so I'm going to overestimate six pages tall. Click OK to see what the result is. And it looks like this. So I'm down to three pages now. Look, one, two, three. Actually, with Excel 2010, what I could have done, rather than chose, chosen that, um, this option here on the uh, dialog box, what I could have done is down here, where it is, go to custom scaling and choose fit all columns on one page. That actually would have the same effect in 2010. But you haven't got that in 2007. You need to do it with a page setup and then fit to one page wide by, and then you just overestimate how many it is tall, and it squeezed it down. So that's good. Um, let me just have a look. So that's page one, that's good. That's page two, that's good. That's page three, that's good. The problem I can see, though, is the headings here, look, number, first name, last name, the field names are on page one, but they're not on page two and page three. So what I'd like to do is to repeat this row on all the other pages. Now, although you can actually get to page setup and go to sheet, where you can tell it to repeat rows at top, you can't actually change anything here, not within the print preview. So what you have to do is actually go to the uh, Page Layout tab at the top here and then choose this option, Print Titles. So I'm going to choose Print Titles and it brings up the same dialog box as we had before but now I can actually get into these, uh, these sections. So I'm going to go to Rows to Repeat at top, click on this little button at the right hand side it says, well, which row do you want to repeat at the top of each page? It's this one, so I'm going to click on row three, click on the button again, and it's put in that dollar three colon dollar three, which means the whole, of, the whole of row three is going to repeat at the top. Click on OK. Or I could go back to print preview here, look. I'll do that, I think, go back to print preview. And it comes back to where we were before. But if we, if we look now across, we've got on page one, we've got those uh, row headings. On page two, we've got the same ones, and on page three, we've got the same ones. So they're repeated 
those field names on every page. And even if you know it was 10 pages, 20 pages, they would still repeat it, be repeated on every page. The other thing I'd like to show you on this dialogue box, I'm just going to bring it over here a bit. So we've looked at the portrait landscape, we've looked at uh, this fitting to a one page wide, and if it was a different uh, proportion, this spreadsheet, you could fit it to one page tall or two pages tall, etc. You can also fiddle about with this percentage, but if you use this, you've got to choose a percentage, anything bigger than 100, um, enlarges the original size, anything smaller than 100 reduces the original size. But you've got to keep clicking on OK to look at the end result over here. Um, margins, you can, if you want to, set exact uh, margin sizes rather than the standard normal large or small uh, sizes. Uh, and then these two options here, header and, header and footer, this is how far the header and the footer that we haven't actually created yet would appear from the edge of the paper. So in this example, the top margin is 1.9 centimetres, that's that bit there. And if we put a header in, it will appear 0.8 of a centimetre down from the top edge of the paper, approximately in the middle of that, uh, of that margin there. So you can change those things here. Uh, you can also centre the spreadsheet on the page vertically and horizontally from here. But I just want to show you about headers and footers. This tab here is where you create headers and footers. Headers and footers are things that repeat on every page of a multiple page document. Um, headers are, appear in the top margin, footers appear in the bottom margin. I'm just going to create a custom header to start off with. Now the sort of thing that you can put in uh, to a header is first text. So I'm just going to put my initials in there. These three sections here, left section just means it's going to go over here. Center section means it's going to go in the middle of the margin. And anything we put in the right section is going to go over here on the right hand part of the margin. So I've just typed in some text and then this first button allows me to format that text. So I could say I'd like that to be bold and I'd like it to be slightly bigger text. So it's an ordinary font um, uh, formatting um, uh, dialog box. So OK. And actually I need to select the text and do that again. Uh, so bold, 14 point OK. So you can see that first button allows you to format things that you type into these boxes. In the centre bit, I'm going to use um, these two buttons. So this button puts in a code and this code will appear actually as a page number, so as 1 on page 1, 2 on page 2, etc, etc. So I'm going to put that in, I'm going to put a space, I'm going to type the word of and another space, and then I'm going to use this button. Uh, this button will put in another code, and this will appear as the number of pages in the document. So in this example it will appear as 3. So the end result will be 1 of 3 on page 1, 2 of 3 on page 2, 3 of 3 on page 3. So those codes actually will appear as page numbers. I'm coming on to the right section and I'm going to type, I'm going to point and click on this button. This puts in a code which will appear as the today's date. And it gets that from the system date in the computer. I'm going to put a space in and then I'm going to click on this one and that puts in today's time. So I'm just using all, I'm trying to use all the buttons to show you what they all do. You probably wouldn't need to put the date and the time in, but I'm just doing it as an example. Click on OK, and then you get over here a little preview of what that's going to look like. I'm going to use a custom footer as well, just to, again to give you uh, an overview of all the tools that we've got. So these are the buttons here. This one inserts uh, the file path. Now the file path is not only the file name, but also where that file is. So if it's on the C drive or the I drive or whatever, a, a particular folder in that drive, it'll show a complete um, path to where the file is held. Or you can click on this one, which will insert a code which you'll just put in the file name. I'm just going to put in the path over here. Um, and then over this one here allows you to put in the sheet name. The sheet name is the name of an individual uh, sheet. So if you remember, this particular sheet is called uh, large. Um, so I had a, small, a sheet called small, a sheet called medium, a sheet called large. Um, I'm just going to put, if I, I'll put that there underneath that one, so there's a bit of space. 
And then on the right hand side you can also put in images as well. So I'm not actually going to put an image in. You'd need quite a small image because it's going to fit into the margin. But a logo or something like that. And what you do is you just click on there and then you have a dialog box and you just navigate to where that picture was. I'm not actually going to put an image in. Click on OK and then it gives you a little preview here of what the end result will look like. I'm now going to click on OK again and it shows you here what uh, the headers and the footers will look like. OK, uh, one last thing, I'm just going to put a grid on this, so I'm going to go to back to page setup, go to the sheet tab and put grid lines in it and then click, up, click on OK. There we are, so that's what it would look like. In each case, when you've actually got the uh, print preview, uh, you can just click on print here and it will uh, print, send it off to paper, looking like the preview. Oh, there's one last thing I'd like to tell you just before I finish, and this is um, the, the headers and, goes with the headers and footers, because at the moment, uh, the headers and footers fit on every page. Sometimes you might not want the header and footer to fit on the first page. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'll say here on the header and footer tab, I'm going to choose different first page, click on OK. And so you can see on page one you don't get headers and footers, but you do get it on page two and page three and so on. OK, that's the end of this little demonstration. Thank you very much for watching.